at Ranieri, who portrayed himself as a savant and a genius, was in fact a master manipulator, a con man, and the crime boss of a cult-like organization. That's U.S. Attorney Richard Donahue, and with great speed, we think, just five hours of deliberation, a jury down in Brooklyn convicting Keith Ranieri of Nexium on all counts, all seven. He could spend life in prison. We are joined by legal analyst from Martin Harding and Mazzotti, Cassandra Kazakanis. Uh, Cassandra, how are you? Good. How are you guys this morning? Good. So we were not the least bit surprised with the guilty verdicts, were you? No, I think it's been so publicized in this area that I don't think anyone really had any question about it. What about the speed? I mean, we thought uh, maybe given like some of the racketeering stuff some of the stuff was a little bit technical in nature the fact that they came back so quickly i think five hours uh, surprised me how about you it does but you know they've been sitting there for seven weeks thinking about this guy and you know honestly nobody seems to like him and sometimes that <laughs> actually plays a part in how quick something can be done yeah but whether you like somebody or you don't like somebody that doesn't mm-hmm. really have an impact sometimes on what the actual charges are uh, you can like mm-hmm. somebody an awful lot but still believe that they did what they did or not like someone an awful lot and say you know the the, the case just isn't there they didn't present much of a defense other than try to say, you know, poke holes in the prosecution and say, oh, yeah, there was one woman who went rogue and it was all her fault. So they really didn't have an effective defense. No, it seemed like the, the focus also was on whether the for the sex trafficking component, whether it was commercial sex sex act. Instead, they're saying it's voluntary and it was sexual. Now, they will, of course, appeal. Uh, no, Everybody expects that. Uh, mm-hmm. do you, I don't know how closely you've been following everything there. Do you, do you think there's a... On what basis do you think they would appeal? I know there was... Kelly and I were speculating earlier there was one instance when they had uh, one of the cooperating witnesses, Lauren Saltzman, on the stand, and the questioning got very rough to the point where the judge just shut it down before the defense might have been done, might have been uh, through with the cross examination. Did you think that that thing with the judge shutting that that aspect down, that witness down, might be grounds for appeal? It doesn't really seem like it. Um, you know, there was still extensive quest- questioning before that. Um, questioning can be shut down if, if the point has been made. You can't badger and berate somebody to get them change their opinion or change their testing. And I think that their points had already been made. The one thing they hadn't gotten to during that cross-examination was that she was testifying as a uh, co- part of a cooperation mm-hmm. agreement, which could have shed a different light on her testimony. Uh, they hadn't gotten into that. But at the same time, they could have had the opportunity the next day when they came back to court to reopen that. They didn't make that request to continue her cross. Exactly. And it's also usually typically a part of the, the jury charges as well. Um, so do you what, what do you think will happen to the other five witnesses here? Do they all have deals or do Will any of them, Lauren Salzman uh, specifically, who was a cooperating witness, I guess, do you, do you think they will be going away doing jail time as well? Yeah, I think that, that's a very real potential for them. I suspect what the deal is going to be is either the length of time, the location of the jail sentence, something like that. But I don't think they're going to walk away scot-free. Were you surprised we were not that Ranieri didn't take the stand himself? No, I wasn't surprised at all. What do you hazard when you bring a guy up there? I mean, could you make the case that this guy is charismatic? Maybe he could bring the jury under his his spell. Uh, you could, but I, the risk is so great in that scenario. Um, I don't think the risk out, or the reward outweighs the risk, I guess. The other plan for the appeal I had read uh, was that he wanted to cite ineffective counsel. Um, how often is that really effective? It's not usually very effective, especially in a situation where he has seven weeks of trial there. They've done vigorous cross-examination. Um, they are going to do appeals. It doesn't have a basis. Case, I would. That's my opinion anyway. Yeah, and, and so he could, I mean, he could uh, get life in prison, I guess, when he had everything up. What kind of, do you think he'll be, uh, ever see freedom? I don't. I don't. I think that with the sex trafficking, the minimum is 58 years old right now, correct? So Mm -hmm. the minimum is another 15. There's also a possibility that there could be other charges brought in other uh, parts, other other jurisdictions, because there were crimes that took place in Mexico and in upstate Mm -hmm. New York, outside of the Eastern District. So um, is this something you think they would possibly pursue, or do you think we're just done now? I think it would depend on the sentencing, but I, why I use the resources of other jurisdictions, not double down on it, but essentially ensure the same that a person who's not going to fly today doesn't see the light of day. Yeah, and good, good, especially if they don't feel there's a good chance to win on appeal. Yeah, why, why, if he's going to be locked up forever, what's the point? I, I get you on that. Hey, for Martin yeah. Harding Mazzotti, uh, Cassandra Kazakanis. Cassandra, thanks so much. No problem. Thank you. Have a great day.